Wow, that's good stuff. Great, right? Oh my God, they're amazing. Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome to Watch Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the best TV shows of each year. You want some respect? Go out there and get it for yourself. All my life, men like you've sneered at me. And all my life, I've been knocking men like you into the dust. I mean, it wasn't even like it was close. It was a landslide victory. For this list, we're going year by year in the 21st century and determining the greatest shows to have premiered in each year. As such, these may not match our older best shows of the year lists. For those, we considered individual seasons versus entire series. So, what's your favorite show of the 21st century? Be sure to let us know in the comments. All right, let's get into it. 2000, Curb Your Enthusiasm. It's borderline impossible to follow up a show like Seinfeld, but just a couple of years after that iconic show's conclusion, Larry David released Curb Your Enthusiasm through HBO. What do you do? How many times can you say no? You couldn't do the big goodbye. I did the big goodbye, so right through it. Produced, created, and entirely outlined by David, Curb Your Enthusiasm follows a fictional and exaggerated version of David as he lives his life and gets himself into awkward predicaments owing to his misanthropic personality and social faux pas. Are you dating? No. No. Why not? <laughs> you, you know what? A, a date is an experience you have with another person that makes you appreciate being alone. Much of the humor is derived from David's social observances and the complex misunderstandings he often gets himself into. The show is still going strong, and its end credit music has become a meme indicating its ascendancy into the pop culture consciousness. <laughs> 2001, Six Feet Under. This death-filled drama isn't the most entertaining of shows, at least in the conventional sense, but it's necessary viewing nonetheless. Serving as a unique mixture between hard-hitting drama and black comedy, Six Feet Under concerns a family who deals with death on a daily basis. That's one of the perks of being dead. You know what happens after you die, and you know the meaning of life. <laughs> that seems fairly useless. Yeah, I know. Life is wasted on the living. As owners of a funeral home, they've become fixated on the many concepts of death. What it means, how it's approaching, how it will affect daily lives, and what it will leave behind. I'm just saying, you only get one life. There's no God, no rules, no judgments, except for those you accept or create for yourself. And once it's over, it's over. Dreamless sleep forever and ever. So why not be happy while you're here? The show earned consistent acclaim for its thematic and thoughtful writing, and it contains a stellar cast who combined for 20 Emmy nominations. Add in one of the best finales in TV history, and Six Feet Under makes for an unforgettable, if difficult, viewing experience. Two thousand two, The Wire. HBO was on an incredible and historic streak throughout the early two thousands, and it continued with The Wire, arguably the greatest television show ever made. The Wire was created and largely written by David Simon, who worked as a police reporter for the Baltimore Sun between nineteen eighty two and nineteen ninety five. While there, he learned the many intricacies of Baltimore, and more broadly, cities in general. All right, listen up, you mutts. This is complicated. I mean, it isn't complicated if you went to college or, I don't know, your mother's actually stopped drinking for a minute while he was pregnant. <laughs> but for Baltimore City Police, this is complicated. He took what he learned working as a journalist and wrote The Wire, a crime drama with huge ambitions. So how do you get to be the king? It ain't like that. See, the king, stay the king, all right? Everything stay who he is, except for the pawns. Now, for pawn, made it all the way down to the other dude's side, you get to be queen. The show tackles numerous heady themes regarding city institutions, including politics, police departments, the press, schools, docks, and the criminal element. It's also massively enjoyable, filled with great characters, fantastic acting, and often hilarious writing. This game is rigged, man. We like the little bitches on the chessboard. Pawns. This show meets its enormous reputation. 2003, Chappelle Show. Dave Chappelle is one of the greatest artists of our time, and while his stand-up is both hilarious and culturally resonant, his greatest work will always be Chappelle Show. 
Airing for just two seasons in the mid-2000s, Chappelle's show served as a sketch comedy with Chappelle both hosting and acting. Unlike many sketch comedies, this one was often written with a wider purpose. It was obviously hilarious and filled with both quotable dialogue and iconic characters, including Tyrone Biggums. I can get some money for this. <laughs> but it also touched on wider cultural issues, including gun violence, politics, and the entertainment industry. The latter proves particularly impactful, as Chappelle famously quit the show owing to the fame and unbearable expectations. Dave, you signed a contract for two seasons, and I don't know if you've read USA Today, but we expect you back for a third. Oh, oh, really? Really? Expect me back, huh? Well, guess what? Expect this. My resignation, effective immediately. I quit! It is, perhaps, the greatest sketch comedy show ever made. I mean, it wasn't even like it was close. It was a landslide victory. <laughs> Game. 2004, Lost. Desert Island stories were big in the early 2000s. Both Castaway and Survivor premiered in 2000, and both proved enormous hits. Lloyd Braun, the head of ABC, wanted something like them for his network. J.J. Abrams was brought in, introducing some mystery and fantasy elements. The island chose you too, Jack. It's destiny. The result was Lost, possibly the biggest cultural TV event of the 2000s. Do you really think all this is an accident? That we, a group of strangers, survived? Many of us with just superficial injuries? You think we crashed on this place by coincidence? Lost wasn't just a good show. It certainly was that, complete with a stellar cast of characters, intriguing mysteries, and surprisingly emotional writing. I've done everything you wanted me to do, so why did you do this to me? No, Lost was a moment. Everyone was talking about it. And internet theorizing proved just as much fun as actually watching it. Look, I know you're all scared. And I know that everybody has a lot of questions. All I can tell you right now is that we do have a plan. With the fragmented nature of modern streaming habits, there may never be a show like Lost again. 2005, The Office. By the mid-2000s, networks were reclaiming some past glory. If you think she's cute now, you should have seen her a couple of years ago. What? Lost proved to be a monumental hit for ABC, and NBC responded with The Office. Serving as an American remake of the British original, The Office got off to a rocky start as it tried too hard to emulate the cold and cynical atmosphere of the original. Things drastically improved with season two, and The Office soon became the most acclaimed comedy on television. That's not how it works. Now, how do you know how it works? Knock it off, okay? I'm interviewing you. No, you said that I'd be conducting the interview when I walked in here. Now, exactly how much pot did you smoke? The writing, characters, and performances were widely adored, and the mockumentary style proved quite fresh and invigorating for the time. The show has become even more popular over the years thanks to Netflix, and it now stands proudly as a classic. It's the ultimate comfort food, good for any time or mood. They say that laughter is the best medicine, so Stanley, you can throw away those pills. You are cured. Actually, you better hold on the pills just in case. 2006, 30 Rock. Not content with just The Office, NBC released another critical hit with 30 Rock. I like you. You have the boldness of a much younger woman. Created by and starring Tina Fey, 30 Rock follows the cast and crew of an NBC sketch comedy program. It obviously refers to Saturday Night Live, and Faye modeled the show and its events after her experiences as head writer. Look, here's someone you never get a chance to meet. It's the head writer of the girly show, Liz Lemon! 30 Rock became known for its unique style of humor, serving as a blend between surreal parody and live-action Family Guy. Like the latter, 30 Rock contained a rapid pace and made extensive use of cutaways. Look at this, and my gold record from that novelty party song. Werewolf for mitzvah, spooky, scary, boys becoming men, men becoming wolves. In 2009, the show's 22 Emmy nominations made it the most nominated comedy season in TV history. 30 Rock left behind an incredible legacy, and it solidified Faye as a television legend. 2007, Mad Men. Expectations were quite high for Mad Men. It was created by Matthew Weiner, who worked extensively with David Chase on The Sopranos, 
co-writing the penultimate episode, The Blue Comet, with him. Weiner did not disappoint with Mad Men. You want some respect? Go out there and get it for yourself. Following the employees of an advertising agency, Mad Men primarily concerns itself with the cultural revolution of the 1960s. I always say, if you don't like what they're saying, change the conversation. It often frames its characters through the pop culture and historical moments of the time, including the civil rights movement, Vietnam, second wave feminism, the counterculture, and even the Beatles' monumental shift in musical style. Impeccably written, designed, directed, and performed, Mad Men easily stands as one of the greats. 2008, Breaking Bad. AMC served us a wonderful one-two punch with Mad Men and Breaking Bad, the latter premiering just six months after the former. Widely heralded as one of the greatest shows ever made, Breaking Bad not only proved the ascendancy of cable TV, but also Netflix. Are you familiar with my product? I've been told it's excellent. It is impeccable. While it premiered with just over a million viewers, the series finale, which aired long after the show found a wider following on Netflix, earned 10 million. I digress. Um, good things are happening. It became a cultural institution through its incredible writing and bingeability, not to mention Brian Cranston's remarkable performance as Walter White. Fulminated mercury. A little tweak of chemistry. Other shows may be more meaningful in regards to their themes, but none is as exciting, visually inventive, or as relentlessly enjoyable as Breaking Bad. 2009, Parks and Recreation. This is a spiritual successor to The Office, sharing much of the same crew, including creators Greg Daniels and Michael Shore, the same mockumentary format, a similar aloof protagonist, a modest setting, and even a rocky first season that many fans tend to ignore. This one follows the parks department of a small and rather insignificant town in Indiana. I'm Leslie Note, and I approve this message. Yeah. Like The Simpsons did with Springfield, Pawnee quickly became its own character, and its many inhabitants prove warm, welcoming, and endlessly entertaining. All right, where to first? Your mother's butt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so alone. If even one of you thinks about dry heaving in my car, you're all walking home. The show also comes with a who's who cast of comedians, including Amy Poehler, Aziz Ansari, Aubrey Plaza, Nick Offerman, and Chris Pratt. If The Office is comfort food, then Parks and Recreation is a comfort meal. Mm. Holy cow. Mm. Wow. That is good stuff. Great, right? Oh my god, they're amazing. 2010, Downton Abbey. It's exceedingly rare for a period drama to reach such fevered heights and cultural obsession. But Downton Abbey managed to bridge the gap between critical stuffiness and widespread enjoyment. On the surface, Downton Abbey sounds just like any number of turgid period pieces following an aristocratic family. Lady Mary, I hope you didn't misunderstand me. I was only joking. Of course. And I agree. The whole thing is a complete joke. But the show is handled much like Mad Men, as it uses historic events as a means to reflect on the characters' lives and social situations and it uses its period setting to depict the fall of the British aristocracy. I think accepting change is quite as important as defending the past. Of course, it happens to be enormously entertaining as well, complete with stellar production values and a particularly fantastic performance from Maggie Smith. Why dwell on that now? Because I want the pleasure of saying I told you so. 2011, Game of Thrones. The television event of the 2010s Game of Thrones aired its incredible first season throughout the spring of 2011, and the world was immediately hooked. When you play the Game of Thrones, you win or you die. There is no middle ground. It helps that the show had such strong foundational material in George R. R. Martin's legendary A Song of Ice and Fire series, and Game of Thrones helped make fantasy cool again. All my life, men like you've sneered at me. And all my life, I've been knocking men like you into the dust. It included a wide range of exciting creatures, including dragons and ice zombies. But the human drama involving politics and war proved just as captivating, if not more so. The King of the North! <laughs> Filled with amazing characters, brilliant writing, and the greatest production values that television has ever seen, Game of Thrones quickly established itself as one of the greatest shows ever made. 
2012. Veep. Larry David wasn't the only one to successfully move on from Seinfeld. Somehow, some way, Julia Louis-Dreyfus landed another role of a career with Selena Meyer, the fictional vice president of the United States. POTUS's quote in his soon-to-be-released Politico interview in which he blames me for the government shutdown. What? Exactly what? If nothing else, Veep proves the incredible legacy and talent of Louis Dreyfus, as she has now provided us with two of the greatest characters in comedy television history. The performance earned her six consecutive Emmy Awards for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Comedy Series, and the show itself earned seven straight nominations for Outstanding Comedy Series, winning three. Stop the count. Right. Shut up, Gary. Ma'am, we can't. I don't care. The train has very publicly left the station uh, and derailed at high speed. No, yeah, stop the count. It was just the show we needed in the turbulent 2010s, showing us that politics is less house of cards and more inane bumbling and hilarious incompetence. You're going to cancel this recount like Anne Frank's bat mitzvah. Yeah, I'm on it. But I think the DJ already spent the deposit. I'm, I'm on it, right? Yeah, Amy. Yeah. I'm tired of losing things! 2013, The Americans. This spy thriller follows in the footsteps of Breaking Bad. Set during the Cold War, The Americans follows two undercover KGB agents posing as a married couple from Washington, D.C. Arlington Methodist in the 66 to the Bellway to the drop site. No, we blew our whole window on the chase. We won't make it. So? Parkway to the Bellway. He dies in 50-50. We missed the handoff anyway. No, the mission comes first. The story contains many aspects similar to Breaking Bad, including protagonists living a secret double life, and a government agent in their social circle, as FBI agent Stan Beeman is the Soviet's neighbor and good friend. We had a job to do. You were my best friend. You were mine too. The show was widely heralded for both its surface excitement and its clever underlying themes regarding marriage and domestic American life. Well, I'm sorry the man you love died and you're stuck with me! I am stuck with you because I took you back after you slept with the woman who had your son and you lied to my face about it! And further in Breaking Bad's footsteps, the Americans became the first drama since it to win two Peabody Awards throughout its run. And yet not nearly enough people watched. 2014, True Detective. While True Detective has since aired three seasons, most people single out the first for praise. Transference of fear and self-loathing to an authoritarian vessel. It's catharsis. Starring Woody Harrelson and Matthew McConaughey as homicide detectives, True Detective had all the trappings of a typical police procedural. Weary detectives, a mysterious killer on the loose, tantalizing clues, and grisly murder scenes. But as well told as the police stuff was, complete with some intriguing time hops, the show earned most of its acclaim through the themes and philosophies it presented, especially through Rust Cole's jaded pessimism. I contemplate the moment in the garden, the idea of allowing your own crucifixion. This is a dour show, both in terms of story, character, visual design, and thematic heft. And it is brilliant. I can say that I, I walked away from the experience with a, a greater respect for the sanctity of human life. 2015, Better Call Saul. Never in a million years should Better Call Saul have worked. But despite everyone's reservations, the show has matched its legendary predecessor in nearly every way. And according to some people, has even exceeded it. You twerps even know who I am? I am Saul Goodman, okay? You think 4K is too much? Yesterday, I got paid 8K just for the afternoon. That's how good I am. I am the real deal. This is more of a character-driven show, largely content with exploring the life of Jimmy McGill and his moral decline into Saul Goodman. You think this is bad? This, this chicanery? He's done worse. That's Billboard. Are you telling me that a man just happens to fall like that? No, he orchestrated it. In that way, it shares an overarching theme with its predecessor. It also proves more tragic, as Jimmy slips for more complex and nuanced reasons. Of course, the show has its cake and eats it too, as the concurrent Mike and Gus storyline provides all the great Breaking Bad excitement we know and love. It's a beautiful and a beautifully written piece of work. And our business here is finished. That's it. That's it. 2016, Atlanta. 
This certainly isn't what we expected from Donald Glover following Community, but we are glad that he defied expectations. On the surface, Atlanta tells a simple story of a poor young man and father who manages his up-and-coming rapper cousin. Paperboy, we're getting a lot of hype in the streets for a possible involvement with a murder is how you say not as talented as people think. It's a weird sentence. But that's just an entry point for Glover and his team of writers and filmmakers to get weird. Famously called Twin Peaks with Rappers by Glover himself, Atlanta is a surreal comedy that focuses less on rap and more on outlandish situations that stretch everyday occurrences and observations to hilarious and sometimes frightening extremes. It's not easy, but who knows? Maybe one day we'll get a great album out of it. A masterpiece. The show also has its serious and more down-to-earth episodes, and these prove just as captivating as the dreamlike weirdness. Keep standing still. You're gone, boy. You're wasting time. And the only people who got time are dead. Atlanta is unlike anything else on TV. I see you there. I pull off with my... 2017. The Handmaid's Tale. Released in 1985, Margaret Atwood's The Handmaid's Tale quickly became a masterpiece of dystopian fiction. Set in the near future where most women have gone infertile, Offred and a group of fertile handmaids are subjected to oppression and sexual abuse by the male leaders of Gilead, who use them to bear children. Oh, you are so lucky, so privileged. Playing Offred in the Hulu adaptation is Elizabeth Moss, one of the most talented actresses currently working in TV. And so I step up into the darkness within, or else the light. The show made history by being the first released through a streaming service to win the Emmy for Outstanding Drama Series. The Handmaid's Tale often makes for horrifying viewing, but no one ever said great art had to be fun. 2018, Barry. Much like Donald Glover in Atlanta, Bill Hader went way off course with Barry, a dark comedy drama about a hitman who falls in love with acting. Interesting. The story's nonsense, but there's something to work with. This is sort of a reverse Breaking Bad, as it concerns a bad person trying to do better while hiding his secret identity from those closest to him. <laughs> hey, whoa, whoa, he's a murderer. You no, know, he was following orders. Sometimes you just have to shut up and do your job. Yeah, but doesn't Macbeth have free will? Yeah. Like, yeah. He doesn't have to take yeah. Lady Macbeth's orders. He can stand up for himself and yeah. say, no, I'm not going to do that. Right, that's what I would Absolutely. do. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, we all would do yeah, that. Cool. The show has received widespread acclaim for its acting, with Hayter, Henry Winkler, Stephen Root, Anthony Kerrigan, and Sarah Goldberg all receiving Emmy nominations, with Winkler winning once and Hayter twice for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Comedy. You've come such a long way from there, so it would be a shame to go back, wouldn't it? All right, so just tuck your crazy in a little bit, yeah? Just yeah. be chill. Yeah. Okay. Barry finds new life through acting, just as Hater found new life through Barry. It's an exceptional piece of television, and one that proved a welcome surprise. 2019, Watchmen. Superhero and fantasy stories should often comment on wider societal implications, and in that regard, Watchmen was a genuine success. Created by Damon Lindelof, Watchmen primarily focuses on issues of racial violence and injustice. You and me, Topher, we don't do lollipops and rainbows. Because we know those are pretty colors that just hide what the world really is. Black and white. At the heart of the story is Angela Abar, also known as Sister Knight. Abar is just one of many police officers who must conceal their identities owing to racist violence at the hands of a white supremacist group. How do you know he said okay? I got a nose for white supremacy and he smells like bleach. The series received widespread praise for its themes and cultural relevance, but it's also a well-made and entertaining show, filled with award-winning acting, writing, cinematography, editing, and costume design. No matter how you view it, Watchmen is a modern-day masterpiece, and it stands proudly beside the iconic comic book series. Legacy isn't in land, it's in blood. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. 2020, I May Destroy You. 
Given the current climate, it's not surprising that so many recent shows have dealt with sexual consent. This British dramedy is one of the most unique and realistic examples. Part of that is because our protagonist doesn't entirely remember the encounter, and the audience is also in the dark. Like, why is my head like bleeding? My phone smashed. Um, I think you fell. Piecing together the events of that night, she's taken to places that are shocking, devastating, and at times darkly humorous, which only adds to the uncomfortable tension. Captivated many in its bold, frank, and unflinching outlook. In addition to starring, I May Destroy You was created, written, co-directed, and executive produced by Michaela Cole, who previously left her mark with the sitcom Chewing Gum. This series feels like Cole's big breakthrough, though, guaranteeing we'll be hearing a lot more about her in the years to come. So, what year do you think was the most stacked when it came to TV debuts? And would you have chosen differently for any given year? I'm disappointed that Schitt's Creek didn't make the list, and I'm pretty sure that Ted Lasso was in the running for 2020. Anyway, be sure to let us know in the comments what you think, or come tell me on Twitter or Instagram at Rebecca Brayton, or on my YouTube channel. See ya!